The world of mental health is constantly changing, especially when it comes to new technology designed to help those suffering with mental disorder. Well, joining us now to talk about this is founder of Level One Diagnostic, Dr. Stephen Hellshine, and he's also representing Horizon Behavioral Health, which of course is one of our coastal experts. Hi, Dr. Hellshine, it's great to see you. Nice to meet you, Natalie. So let's talk about what is the difference between mental health and mental illness? Let's start there. So mental illness are the diseases of the brain that we're familiar with, like depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety. If I walk into a waiting room and there's 20 patients in there, 10 of them may have mental illness, but 20 of them have some degree of mental health. Treating mental illness with drugs and talk therapy is good, but if we improve the mental health of a patient, that only benefits the mental illness side, and that's the difference. And so many things are constantly changing. What is neurofeedback? Neurofeedback is a biofeedback type of technology in which they're brain mapping. All the major universities are doing brain mapping where if somebody has a twitch in their hand and we know that that lights up right here, then the idea is if we Google map the brain we can go into this area, zap it, and the twitch goes away. We've taken a much different take for using neurofeedback for healing the brain. So uh, Dr. Hellshine, you mentioned neurofeedback. So what is the difference between neurofeedback and brain paint? Brain paint is our technology that measures the brain waves and then opens a window for the brain to look at itself and heal itself. So let's talk about brain paint and take a look at a session. What would that be like? The first session is about an hour and a half in length because we go through a very detailed questionnaire with the patient to put them into a category. There are four types of brain waves that we're measuring which means that you could have a high alpha, a low beta, a high alpha, a low theta. You can have 16 combinations of differences with four different brain waves. So we categorize the person the first time mm -hmm. with the questionnaire and put them into a certain protocol. Okay. Then we'll hook up four electrodes based upon the protocol. So it may be two here and two here etc. So everybody has their individualized treatment, their individualized protocol, and then they will either sit and stare at the computer screen and their brain will draw pictures or they'll close their eyes and listen to the music and their brain will draw pictures. That's why we call it brain paint. So what's the difference in, say, brain training and a learned behavior? So a learned behavior, let's say I'm walking across my carpet every day, and I know that when I go to touch this door, I get a shock. So I now walk more slowly, and I don't put my hand out to get the shock. That's brain behavior learning, brain behavior. Mm -hmm. Brain learning is taking the fact that I may be too, my brain's working too fast or my brain's working too slow and balancing it. We've never really had the ability to do deep brain learning before. And now with this technology, with neurofeedback and especially associated with artificial intelligence, brain paint now has the ability to give the person to do brain learning. So now the big question here, uh, Dr. Hellshine, does insurance pay for brain training? It does. And fortunately, we're at a place now, even with all the problems we have with insurance, this country is finally recognizing that mental health and mental illness needs to be handled. Look at all the things that are happening with the shootings, et cetera. We, know, we keep blaming it on mental illness. Well, if we're gonna blame it, we've got to have a way of treating it. So the insurance companies are really 
getting more aggressive on being able to treat people for their problems. You're so right about that. And let me ask you this. Now, who is this geared for? A lot of viewers watching right now. What age is it appropriate for? Well, the scientific studies show that we can use it from a six-month-old toddler all the way up to... Six months? Six months. Wow. We can use it for a six-month-old toddler all the way up in age. Um, my specialty has never been to work with very young pediatrics. And I'm not sure about Dr. Bonjoko and his group with regard to that, except for autism and kids on spectrum. I know that they help a lot of kids on spectrum. And I know that we can help ADD and ADHD. So it's good for for kids, it's good for adults. You know, mental health and mental disorder issues are so overwhelming sometimes, and, and new technology is so important. Why is this so important to you, Dr. Hellshine, to see brain paint and new technologies to continue to be expanded upon? We have to have some way of helping a person heal. And the treatment that occurs with brain paint causes brain learning to occur, which can be a permanent cure for people with depression, anxiety, ADD, ADHD, bipolar disorder. Once we relearn the proper elevation of our brain function, we're in a much better place. So my mission is to help cure mental illness. And it's a definitely a wonderful mission. And I want to thank you so much for all the information that you provided and also for being with us today. Thank you very much, Natalie, for having me. If you'd like more information on brain paint or level one diagnostic or horizon behavioral health, just check out our coastal experts page at WSAV.com.